प्रभु तव मुरति विनोद कारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जे ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह नजर समी पे रहो अमारी ए ह हरे कृष्ण महाराज नी जय घनश्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ओ माइडी और बिलवेड घनश्याम महाराज the path maker to our liberation, our dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. This world consists of two primary sources. These two primary sources are potentially the most, you can say, attracting, the most alluring of the elements that the whole world revolves around them. If there wasn't these two elements, then it would be very, very easy to attain God. But due to the two elements will be mentioned, many, many, 99% of the people who live on earth, the souls that live on earth, become stuck in Bhagavan Swami Narayan's Maya. You're probably wondering, what are these two things? Number one is for males, it's for females, and for females, it's males, meaning gender. And number two, greed. Now, as we grow up and we learn about the world, number one is something that is natural and occurs in everyone's life. But number two is something that you can control more, something that you can stay away from, something that needs to be taken into consideration that this is poison. For number one, the whole world revolves around males and females. So prevention is very, very difficult, especially for those who are householders. But definitely, number two, which is greed, lob, is something that can be prevented if the proper tactical actions are taken. But to address this, topic, this element, which is taking us further away from Bhagwan, we need to first listen in to a charitra, listen to a small, you can say, moral story that will teach us. And from that, what Bhagwan Swaminarayan says in his Vachnamrut, and from there, even great figures in history have fallen from this tragic, tragic, you can say, element. So this moral story's name is Take a Needle to Heaven. Swami Narayan Hare. <clears throat> Remember that only wealth which is spent in the service of God, His holy sadhu, and the needy is worthwhile. Our good deeds alone accompany us after death and nothing else will join us. There lived a wealthy Shet, meaning Shet is a businessman. But he was a Scrooge, meaning he was very mean and miserable. He never spent a rupee, meaning if we put it into context, dollar. He never donated even a single coin and always wore worn shoes and tethered clothes. One day he fell seriously ill and became bedridden. So what happened was that there was this very wealthy uh, businessman, but he was very, very, you can say, greedy. He never spent anything, 
even shoes or clothes even for himself, and he never donated money anywhere. So one day he fell very, very ill, seriously ill. During his whole life, it was said that he had only one friend, and that was his personal tailor. But unfortunately, he had died a few months earlier, the tailor. Everyone knew the, shit's, the businessman's days were numbered. One by one, his family and neighbors came to pay their formal respects. When the tailor's son arrived, the businessman said, It seems that I will not last long here. My moment to rise to Swarag has come. Swarag is heaven. Meaning, he's saying, this greedy businessman, he's saying that my moment to go to heaven has now come. The young boy, though only 15 years old, was very wise. He knew of the Sheikh's craving for wealth. And for wealth. <clears throat> he replied, Oh Sheikh, my father is already in Svarg, meaning the tailor. He often told me that he wished to sew rich garments for the Lord, meaning the tailor used to address his son now and then when he was alive, that I want to make rich garments, rich clothes, clothing for God when I reach up there in heaven. But he forgot to take his needle with him. That's what the son replied, said, Will you please take this needle with you and give it to him? So the boy asked, my father has forgotten his needle. I would like you, the businessman, to take it to heaven and give it to him so he can sew nice clothing for Bhagwan. Oh, all right. I'll be happy to do that, he agreed. The, the businessman was happy to do anything as long as he did not have to, he did not involve in any giving, meaning he was happy to do everything he just didn't want to give anything out of his pocket. He took the needle and gave the boy permission to leave. Alone in his bed, he began wondering, Where shall I place the needle? Pin it to my shirt? No, that won't do. All my clothes will burn away on the funeral pry. In my mouth? <clears throat> yes, I'll place the needle in my mouth and nothing will happen then again he had second thoughts but my whole body will be burnt to ashes how am I to carry the small needle to Swarg the more he thought about it the more confused he became finally he called the tailor's boy and said son here take your needle back I won't be able to take it to Swarg <clears throat> So this businessman, this wealthy businessman, was given a needle by the tailor's son to take to him back to Swarg. But after thinking and thinking, the businessman, first he thought he can pin it to his clothes, but then he figured that his clothes will be burned. Then second he thought he'll put it in his mouth, but then he figured out his body will also be burned. Then he got confused more and more. And finally, he called the son back and said, I can't keep the needle because I don't know how to get the needle to Swarga. How can I take it with me? But the boy looked amused. If you're going to carry all your millions of dollars to Swarga, then why can't you carry one little needle? This is the question. This is a question that if one cannot understand, then this greed, this vicious vice, this evil, evil nature, which has been bothering humans for innumerable time, cannot be solved. Upon researching, and this example has been given previously in lectures, but 
since it's so suitable for this part of this lecture, just to refresh our memories, Alexander the Great, <clears throat> he conquered nearly 75% of the world at a young age of 26. Yet, the last, w the last wishes on his deathbed are something to remember right now. So I want to read you what he wished for and why he wished for it. It's all explained. On his deathbed, Alexander summoned his generals and told them his three ultimate wishes. Number one, the best doctors should carry his coffin, meaning his <clears throat> whole body. Number two, the wealth he has accumulated, money, gold, precious stones, should be scattered along the procession to the cemetery, meaning along the pathway where his coffin is being carried. It should be scattered throughout the pathway. Number three, his hands should be let loose, hanging outside the coffin for all to see. This, these were his three wishes. Alexander the Great, most of you who have attended history know that he has such a very, very, you can say, impact in European history and world history due to his determination, enthusiasm. Yet, it was to conquer the whole world. But if we look at it in a positive manner, <clears throat> the way he conquered the world was spectacular at such a young age and at such an era, at such a time. Yet, such a great person in world history, if we can look at it in, in this world's, uh, you can say, vision, perspective, such a person asks for these three things. You're probably wondering why. Well, one of his generals, who was surprised by these unusual request, requests, asked Alexander to explain. Here's what Alexander the Great had to say. For number one, number one was the best doctor should carry his coffin. What did he say? I want the best doctors to carry my coffin to demonstrate that in the face of death, even the best doctors in the world have no power to heal. Meaning, in the face of death, such kind of diseases in this world as of right now, cancer and so on and so forth, the best doctors still do not have any remedy to solve such kind of diseases. In, the fashion, in this fashion, Alexander the Great also states this. Number two, I want the road to be covered with my treasure so that everybody sees that material wealth acquired on earth stays on earth. Our moral story that was addressed where even a single needle has to stay on this earth, then millions and millions of dollars that maybe some have accumulated or some want to accumulate for even the worst actions, for even performing sins. For example, if someone were to give you a thousand dollars a day, but you had to kill animals so meat is produced. If one takes this, you can say, job, then we know that Bhagwan Samiran's agna is to not to only eat meat, but to ki not also to kill any living beings. Even to the minute, my, minutest, mosquito, ant, so on and so forth. Then, if we take this job offer, since it offers so much money, then our greed has overcome us and we are actually going into negative and performing and breaking another rule of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Greed is, you can say, the way to perform the most sins. If you, want, if you become more greedy, you perform more sins in this world. It's just a, it's a principle. Not only that, but if someone were to you know, say that I have the law, winning lottery, lottery trick ticket, but I need you to kill five people and I'll give you it. And you'll receive $300 billion. And if you take this challenge, then 
these are extreme examples, but something that you can at least comprehend that even if I do the smallest for $5 or $10, as maybe our friends say, that, you know, I want you to do this and I'll give you $10, but it's something that's against Bhagwan Swaminarayan's wish, then we are breaking not only Bhagwan's rules, but we are also ruining our path to liberation. So everything that we attain in this world, may it be fast cars, millions and millions of dollars and gold, or big luxurious houses, or nice clothing, or nice perfumes, or nice shoes, or anything in this world that, that's materialistic that you can buy with money. No matter what, nothing is coming with us. And that's proven by a person that lived on this world. Nothing, not to do anything with religion, but Alexander the Great was just a historic figure. You can say a, 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 um, a general of an army that said these kinds of statements, then as satsangis of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, all the teachings of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, the Vachanamrut and Shiksha Patri and so on and so forth, that has to be put into our life, implemented only so that we can become safe from this vicious vice. And number three, finally, I want my hands to swing in the wind so that people understand that we come to this world empty-handed and we leave this world empty-handed after the most precious treasure of all is exhausted, and that is time. Time is our most precious treasure because it is limited. We can produce more wealth, but we cannot produce more time. When we give someone our time, we actually give a portion of our, of our life that we will never take back. Our time is our life. May you have plenty of time and may you not have the wisdom to give it away. Meaning such a historic figure left, of, left us, left the whole world with such a message that we can understand and comprehend that if a person at the age of 26 years old conquers 75% of the world, meaning land, wealth, pleasure, everything. And then at the end, he says that I'm not taking anything with me. Then who are we to accumulate maybe one day in our bank account, $1 million? Or if we have one store, we buy another store. Or if we have a Toyota Corolla and we go to the dealer and buy a Mercedes Benz, how long will that last? And what will that give us and get us to? If we just have this small single thought in our mind, then we can be saved from this, this vicious nature, greed. In Bhagwan Swaminarayan's Vachnamurti, he states in Gadada, last chapter 38, Sriji Maharaj then explained, greed for wealth and other things, desire to associate with women, attachment of the tongue to various tastes, the belief that one is the body, affection for kusangis, and attachment to one's relatives. One who possesses these six characteristics will never become happy, either in this life or even after death. Therefore, one who desires to be happy should eradicate such swabaos, meaning natures. Bhagwan's first statement, greed for wealth and other things, out of these six, proves and shows that it's the way to become unhappy. And in our life, even if we look in the perspective of teenagers right now, we tend to seek for the best phones, the iPhone 10, which came out, which is over a thousand dollars. With a thousand dollars, you can do so much other productive things than a phone. And if we buy a phone, which is a thousand dollars, suppose we're talking with our friends and walking and we drop our phone on cement ground, the whole screen cracks, then that thousand dollars is gone. But more efficiently using our parents' money to 
somehow accumulate or associated with satsang is very important. That's just one example. Wearing nice clothes because others in school wear nice clothes, but they're very expensive. Such kinds of small, small acts that we don't even realize but are hurting us negatively in spirituality is something that we should watch out for. Therefore, in Bhagwan Swaminarayan's time, there is many, many actions. And even this was just a charitra by Bhagwan Swaminarayan. But Bhagwan always needs some kind of reason to come on this earth and also go back up to his Akshardham. But a Swami was told by Maharaj to make ladavas, meaning sweet balls. And he, this Swami was uh, pretty much, uh, he was the chief executive of the temple. So he run all the, man he managed everything. So instead of, there's two kinds of ways to make ladavas, sweet balls. One is from gor, meaning jaggery, and one is from sugar. The ones from sugar are more expensive than the ones from gor. Because the ones from sugar require more ghee. Ghee is very expensive in that time and also right now. The ones from gor do not require too much uh, ghee. But Maharaj had said specifically to that sadhu that I would like you to make sweet balls, ladus from sugar. But that Swami thought that this would be double the money and it would be very bad. So let's make it from gor. So then it was made from gor and then it was served to all the Maharaj and sadhus and Maharaj ate the ladus and then, then after he, Maharaj asked the Swami that very, very sweet ladus, what were they made from? And the Swami replied, sugar. And then upon hearing that, Maharaj said, I had instructed you, or sorry, he said it was made from jaggery. And thereupon hearing that, Maharaj replied that I had asked you to make it from sugar and you made it from jaggery. And Maharaj became depressed in a short period of time. He took an illness and he went back up to his Akshardham just due to greed. But if we look in the life of our Puja Guruji, it's something completely opposite. There's this one story that Puja Guruji was in Chicago, Illinois. This was at least, in, I think, at least 15 years ago. There was a Hari Bhagat with him. And Puja Guruji had come uh, to this temple to do a Parayan. And he was around the Chicago land doing Padramnis at houses. And Hari Bhaktos would put some kind of, you know, uh, offer some kind of do donation and a cover. And that Hari Bhagat would take it. Now, the people of the temple said to Guru, Guruji that, or said to the Hari Bhagat that give all your donations to us. They are not yours to keep. So that Hari Bhagat was very, very saddened and he was driving and he was sad. So Puja Guruji asked the Hari Bhagat, why are you so sad and moodless? And the Hari Bhagat replied that, you know, the Mandir has told us that we cannot keep any of the donations and we have to give them back. And this is all your personal, you know, you are, you are doing this. You're making an effort in going to Padramnis and going to people's homes and staying hungry and... Uh, making the effort to please Hari Bhaktos, this should be kept, you know, and it should not be given to the temple. And Guruji said, no, we are pleasing Maharaj and Hari Bhakto. That's our main goal. Please give all the donations we receive from all the Padramnis to the temple. And that Hari Bhagat was shocked to see this, see such kind of a sadhuta, and from onwards, that Hari Bhagat even became more and more, uh, you can say, engrossed and very, very uh, allured by Puja Guruji's sadhuta. And that's how we can even see that Puja Guruji's greedless Nirlobi Vratman, his, his five vows as a sadhu, one of them is Nirlobi. How he does not have greed is implemented in with our charitra for today. 
So saying that as youngsters, if we don't get our way, if sometimes we want something and that's a little expensive out of our budget, our parents' budget, then we should understand that it's not going to come with us. Yes, you are a teenager. You only live once. I've even heard of that statement as well. But even more than living once, if we live a good life, then it's living a thousand lives, we can say. Something where we can please Bhagwan, satisfy him with our character, then it's living thousands and thousands of lives at one time. So be careful when you are with your parents or any, anywhere in investing in anything. Don't become greedy and be smart and make the choices to, to please Bhagwan and Puja Guruji, Puja Santo. Saying this, 